God is leaning in your direction. Listen, a blessing is on the way to you. I, I, I honestly, I, I'm so excited about this message that we're going to get into, but I do want you to know that when God blesses one, he blesses another. So we can get excited. All right. No matter what our situation is looking like, God is in the blessing business. And that's something that we should get excited about. All right, family, so today we are going to talk about the woman with the issue of blood. And I kind of had a, a lot of emotions going on before I started this recording, and I'm not going to try to fake it. Like, I want you to, to hear that, even in my voice. Um, this is a very personal message to me. It's something that I need to hear that is really blessing my spirit, that is really encouraging me, and I hope that it does the same for you. So before we start, all glory to God. Of course, I'm not a preacher, math, past, pastor, minister, or any of that. Okay, I'm just I'm just a woman sharing the word. One thing I do want to do is I want to give credit to some people who have really inspired me to talk about this message and, and many other messages. Reggie Carter, um, Dr. DeHarius Daniels. So I'm going to be pulling some stuff from him. And then Noel Jones. So I listened to a few sermons from him as well. Um, and of course, Jesus, Jesus. All right, got my Bible right here. <laughs> All right, so we're going we're gonna to get into this. I want you to know this first. I don't care what your situation looks like. I don't care how heavy it is, how long you've been in it, how, how much of a struggle, it, whatever it looks like. God can turn it around in an instant. And I know you've heard that before. People have told you that before. But what I'm telling you is right here in the Bible. Okay. As Dr. DeHarris would say, I got, I got Bible. I got text. And I'm going to prove it to you. So a lot of times when we're doubting God, and I know it's tough. When your back's against the wall and you're tired, you're worn out, you're exhausted, you're running out of resources, you're about to lose your mind. Listen, I get it. I know that feeling. That's when we have to go back into the Bible and say, let me see who God did it for. Let me see who I can relate to with a similar story. Who's experienced something similar to what I have experienced. And we see the evidence of God's power and what he's done. We see his track record right here. All right. So I want you to always lean to the word, no matter what your situation is. Right. You tell the enemy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So let's get into this word. So I'm coming out of Mark, Mark chapter five. We're going to kind of look at verses 21 through 34, 35. And now let me start off by giving you a little bit of um, context before we get into the content, as, as Dr. DeHarius would say. And I love that because we, we want to know what, what's the tone here? What's the vibe here? Some of you might be familiar with the woman with the issue of blood. But right before she has her encounter with Jesus, he is in, in the blessing. Like he, he, he's performing miracles everywhere. People are following him. He literally is on his way to heal a little girl who is sick unto death. And her father is like, Jesus, I need you to just come to my house. I know she will be healed if you would at least come and see about my daughter. Okay, this is what's happening before. And Jesus says, yes, I will take me to her. So Jesus is on his way to bless somebody else. It's not even about this woman right now. It's about this little girl. So she finds out. She hears about Jesus. And she said, I must go to him. If I could at least touch the hem, thank you, Reggie, the H-E-M of his garment. She wasn't even like, I need to touch him, Jesus, H-I-M. She's like, I just need to get, I just need to get a thread. If I could just get a fingertip on a thread. 
That's how strong her faith was and how strong her belief was. Okay. She said, I shall be made well. And that's, that's chap that's verse 28. So she said, for I said, if I only may touch his clothes and remember there's other interpretations and versions of it, I shall be made well. Now this woman had been struggling with this issue of blood for 12 years, 12 years. Some of you might be going through something you've dealt with for years. And she spent, the Bible says that she spent all her money. She's going to different doctors. She's seeing different specialists. She's trying everything that she can. She's doing her part. Nothing is working. As a matter of fact, it got worse. So this woman not only has, thank you, Dr. DeHarius Daniels, a physical problem. This physical problem now turns into, it's a money, a financial problem. Now, I'm, first I'm sick. Now I didn't spend all the money that I have. Now I got a financial problem, which leads to an emotional problem. Because if I'm doing everything I can to figure something out and nothing's working, that's going to hit me hard emotionally. That's going to frustrate me. That's going to discourage me. And if we're not careful, that emotional problem can turn into a spiritual problem. And what many people do, unfortunately, when it gets hard, when it gets difficult, they do what Job's wife basically told him to do. She was like, you need to just die and curse God. You need to just turn your back on him because he obviously does not love you or else he wouldn't have put you through this and that's the enemy but but that's what many of us do is we we push further away from God and I get it because we're angry we're upset we're disappointed we're tired we're weak we're worn we're confused it wears on your faith I understand that but I want you to know it is those times where we need to run toward God, not away from him. That we need to say, God, I don't understand this. Like I heard a woman say, you know, um, I'm, I'm not, um, wow, I don't even know how she said it. Something about not focusing so much on her understanding of God, but relying on her trust of God. So we're not going to always understand what God is doing in our life and why and when and who and what. We're not. We're not. The Bible says, lean not to your own understanding. But we must trust him. You can say, God, I don't understand this, but I trust you. God, this is hard, but I trust you. God, I'm feeling weak. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling worn out. I'm depleted. God, I don't know what else to do or where else to go, but I trust you. God, help me. Guide me. Shape me. Use me. And until I have nothing else left and no breath left, I am going to worship you. So, sorry, I went off a little bit, but let me, let me bring it on back. All right. So what happens now is she gets close to Jesus. Jesus is walking through the crowd. She sees him. Verse 29, it says, immediately. Please write that on the tablet of your heart right now immediately this woman was dealing with something for 12 years immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that the power had gone out of him turned to the crowd and said who touched me who touched my clothes and I'm going to paraphrase this. The disciples were like, what do you mean who touched you? Like, it's a it's hundred crazy people. Like, everybody touching you. Now, as Dr. DeHaria said, Jesus does not ask a question to get an answer. He's God. He knows who touched him. Right? We can all agree to that. So why would he ask this question, who touched me? Mm. Okay, let me explain that and then we get to the next part. Because he's creating a situation for, for glory. 
he is teaching in this moment, not just to this woman, not just to the disciples, to the crowd, everybody. He's like, let's pause. Let's stop. Who touched me? So now she has to come out of any guilt, any shame, any of that that she has. She has to step forward and show herself. And now she's created and God has created a situation here for a revelation for everyone that's involved. So it says, and he looked around to see who had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her came and fell down before him and told the whole truth. And he said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Remember I said, we are blessed according to our faith. Your faith has made you well, go in peace. Whew. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Oh man, that's just so good. That's, that's just so, that gives me hope. That gives me hope in knowing that no matter what it is, we got to keep trusting God. We have to put our life in his hands. We got to lay some stuff at his feet. Because we can only do so much. We are limited. We are limited. God is all knowing and all powerful. And there's only so much that we can take on where we have to say, God, I need to give this to you. And I want you to know that God sees you. He will. He will stop in the middle of a crowd to come and see about you. But you got to keep trusting him. No matter what's happened in someone else's life, it didn't happen for somebody else or, you know, they talking negative and the enemy is in your ear. Do not let any of that rob you of what you believe is possible for God to do in your life. So I pray that this message blesses you and please share it with somebody. You know, share it with somebody. Like I said, this woman was blessed because Jesus was on his way to bless someone else. And that's how it works. God blesses people that he can trust. Can he really trust you with what it is that you're asking him to deliver you from? What does it mean for him? What does it mean for the kingdom? That is the question. God bless y'all.